Howdy folks, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about GeoLayers 3, check out my premium masterclass, which I'll link to down in the video description. And if you'd like to vote on and help me choose the next idea for the videos on my YouTube channel, go check out my Patreon page. First thing I wanna talk about is saving out your map comp view. If you go down and press add features to browser, this little plus icon here, there's something called map comp view. If I click on this, it allows me to save out this particular map comp view. And think of this as in, like in QGIS, you have spatial bookmarks. It's the same thing. So the default name here is world view. I'll go ahead and apply that. Now I have this new feature here, world view. So let's say we want to do like a zoom in to Corsica. So we wanna have like a close up view of Corsica, but we want this to be pitched out. So I'm gonna change the pitch and the bearing here. And I'm gonna zoom in. So this is a quite a different angle that we're looking at here. And now I'll go and I'll save out this one. Click on map comp view, call it close up Corsica. So now if I just double click between these views, it jumps my map comp view. Where this really is very, very cool in an animation workflow, let's say I want to start in my wide view and then animate to Corsica. I can just add keyframes here and then move my playhead quickly to the two second mark, double click on close up of Corsica, and now I have an animation. You see, I'll play this back. Boom, it's animating on. Super, super fast way to work. I like to do all of this up front. I figure out you know, like do a quick little storyboard of what I'm gonna be animating, and then I save out all those map comp views. So it allows you to quickly animate your view very, very fast. Not only that, let's say you're geo-referencing something and you don't wanna accidentally move your map and then everything's gonna shift out of place if you don't have everything, all those elements connected to your map. This is another great use of these map comp views. You can create a map comp view and call it like geo-referencing spot so that you know if you accidentally move that map, you can quickly snap it back to that world view. You probably wanna save these out as a feature. So you say add feature collections, and then you can call them map comp views, and then you can even um, export this out as a GeoJSON if you wanna share it with another animator. The second trick is probably my favorite. It's all about filtering here inside of the feature browser. So let's say I wanna draw out all the countries in the continent of Africa here. How can I do that? Well, first I'm gonna go over and add features to browser. I'm gonna select download features and I'm gonna grab this country's global data set from Natural Earth. That's gonna add this data set to my feature browser here as a feature collection, which is essentially like this, this folder of polygons here which has all of the countries. Now you'll see in the preview here, when it comes up, it's showing us every single country in the world. We don't want that. We just wanna see these countries in Africa. Let's actually, let's try to just get one real quick. So I'm gonna zoom in here and let's say we wanna draw out first, we wanna draw out something like the country of Tanzania. So I'm gonna zoom all the way into Tanzania here. I could just scroll down and try to find this to draw it out, but there's two things that are annoying. It's still showing all of the countries and not only that, they're not even alphabetized. So first, with the feature collection selected, I can click on Feature Properties, and there's a little checkbox over here called Sort Features by Name. Click on that, click Apply, that will automatically alphabetize those by their current name. Now, I still don't wanna see all the countries here. If I need to get Tanzania now, I still have to scroll down through all the way down to T. One really quick way to do this is to just filter the view here. So if you click on this, it's gonna filter out this feature collection only by the polygons or the countries that are in your map comp view, which right now you can see are only these. Now when I scroll down, it's showing us just these countries, which indeed includes Tanzania right there. Now, that's a pretty cool way to work with features, but an even better way is you can filter them based on keywords of their value or their attributes. So what I can do here I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And let's say now I want to see just the uh, countries in the African continent. Well, I can do this. Let me just grab one of these. And if you click, you know, click on an individual country and then you click on feature properties, it will show you all of the different attribute fields here. So I scrolled about halfway down here and here is the key for continent with the value of Africa. Now I can type this into the filter keyword search bar to filter this, but it's important that I get the casing and everything very specific and accurate. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on the word continent and it's gonna copy that to my clipboard. And right here it says Africa. 
So I'm gonna click cancel. And now when I come over here to filter right here, I can just paste continent. And then I'm gonna do equals and I'm gonna type in Africa. And again, I'm gonna type it in exactly as it had it written in the particular field. And now you can see this feature collection right here. If I select it again, now it's filtered by this. And now as I zoom out, yes indeed, you can see that we're only seeing the countries within Africa. Now I can draw these out, I can create a new feature collection, whatever I wanna do. The power of data fields, I love it. One thing that's especially frustrating for me about GLRs is the fact that you can't pre-comp very easily. You do have a script up here, if you click on this, it says pre-compose feature shape layer, but however, there's a lot of issues you can run into with that. In fact, I just don't use it anymore. So the way I like to go about pre-comping is to create another map comp that I can draw my features directly inside of and then turn off the background base imagery. So let me show you what I'm talking about. You go up here and you click on this little map comp button and you do create new map comp. And let's say in this example, I want to have all of my country shape feature polygons go into this pre-comp. So I'll call it countries. And then under link view, I wanna make sure that I link it to my map comp. And that way, anytime I move my map comp and do map like animations, this map comp is gonna follow along. Otherwise, it will just stick and not follow along. It doesn't really matter what imagery you select because I'm gonna be turning this imagery off. I'll go ahead and create this. So now I see the new base map imagery in my new map comp because the country's map comp, if you look in the timeline here, it's placed on top of my map comp. To turn that off, I go back up to map comp view and I just click on this little button right here and that's gonna turn it off. And now I'm gonna click on it to select it. And let's say we wanna draw out Tanzania. I'm gonna search it down here. I'm gonna grab it and then click on this color to set your layer style. But be sure that down here you select inside map comp so that it will place this feature inside of that map comp wherever you have the map comp selected, which is right here. Now when I go down and I draw the feature out, it's gonna draw it inside of this country's map comp, which is just did. Now we can see it here, but you can't see it here. That's because it's inside of this one. You kind of have to be an advanced After Effects user to understand the benefits of this, but basically when you're applying effects, to um, certain things, they act differently depending on whether you're applying them to a raster or a vector element. And this pre-comp is gonna act as a raster element whereas a shape layer acts as a vector. So you, you're basically able to apply effects to this country's pre-comp that wouldn't work very well with your individual shape layers. It also allows you to just do a bunch of cool stuff that you could do within this pre-comp just the power of pre-comping all together in After Effects, it opens this up. And there are just a thousand other things you can do with this. For example, I could have left the base map imagery on, and then I could use another a map feature, like I could take the Tanzania uh, shape layer and then use that as a mat to mat out just Tanzania with that base map on this particular country's pre-comp and then turn the opacity down of the other map comp to isolate it. So there's you can use this to, you can unlink this comp and you could use it as a locator map, there's a thousand things you can do with creating multiple map comps and layering them up. But we don't need this tutorial to be four hours. Go buy my masterclass. If you've used GeoLayers long enough, you've probably encountered this problem, and that's where you have really rugged coastlines for your polygons. They don't fit the land masses of your base map, and it's just, it's really annoying if you want to get good looking visuals. So I came over here to Wales, which is a perfect example. If I do a keyword search for this map feature and I download or add this to my browser, you'll see with this selected in the preview that indeed the edge here goes way out into the water. It doesn't fit nicely to the coastline. So I'm gonna create a new feature here. So if I go to add features to browser, I'm actually gonna download this ocean data set right here from Natural Earth. Click on this, that'll add it to my feature browser. Now I'm gonna grab whales and I'm gonna hold control or command and grab the water polygon. So you have to grab both of these at the same time. You can't just grab the ocean feature collection. You have to grab the actual feature. Now with these both selected, you'll see down here, this just became visible, subtract lower feature. So I need to make sure that my water feature is underneath whatever country I'm working with because I wanna subtract the water from my feature. And what that will do is ideally, it's gonna give me a new feature that will have a nice coastline because I'm just subtracting all this. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute this little 
operation here and it says subtracting feature and now we have a new feature called whale subtracted and look at how beautiful that is now let's just draw that out and see how it looks make sure it's not inside the map comp and i've turned off simplified geometry so it's going to give me a lot of vertices if i draw it out yeah it even tells me you have 26,000, almost 26,500 vertices this may take a while in an ideal situation uh, you might want to simplify that geometry a little bit there you go now you have a proper polygon what I would suggest doing is just saving out this new feature that you created. You can even export it as a GeoJSON um, and save it for later. All right, last but not least, I want to talk about label templates. I feel like a good majority of GeoLayers users kind of ignore these because they're a little more difficult to work with. But I want to show you an easy way to create a bunch of templates that are going to look good. I know you have these default templates up here under this drop down menu. And these don't look the best in my opinion. And if you use these, everybody immediately is going to know, oh, you use geo layers, and it's just kind of not the best look. So to quickly create your own little group of templates without having to manually create them all, just go to the map comp here and then go to map comp settings. And then if you scroll all the way down, you have a section for map comp labels. And if you click here, you have this little button over here called edit labels. So go over there and that brings up these labels here. You can actually turn all these labels into templates that will show up in that drop down menu. And they're really cool. These are already like, you know, sized for the particular regions. You have countries, continents, states, cities, towns, villages, even some with the little markers here, which is great. So if you click on this button here, create template labels, it's going to automatically create these in your project. Now we see this little message here, label templates created. New label templates based on the selected map comp labels have been created. You will find them in your label templates drop down in the toolbar. So now I just exit out of the map comp settings. And if I go back to my map comp here and I go to the drop down menu, voila, all of these are available. Cities, continents, super, super cool. I urge you to play around with this because once you figure out how to actually work with label templates, they are very great when you want to create your own custom look. Really creating your own label templates from scratch, that, that is like, you got to dedicate time for that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks. Hopefully I provided something that you didn't know about. Maybe you learned something new. If you want to learn a lot more, you really want to master GeoLayers, once again, please check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. There's a link down there in the video description. Or if you just want to go more map nerd mode, be sure to join my Patreon page where you can vote on future video ideas and you get access to exclusive tutorials and a ton of cool other map related stuff.